At the NAACP, we will not turn a blind, a blind eye to murder, a blind eye to homicide, a blind eye to the loss of life, to the loss of children. Every community member, every member of our town, every member of our city, every member of our county, and every member of our state of Washington should take a step back at any time when somebody loses their life to violence. We start by talking about Officer Timothy Brenton, who just two years ago on October 31st was shot and killed, leaving behind family members, leaving behind loved ones, no longer in a place where he has the opportunity to raise his children, no longer in a place where he has the opportunity to support and love his wife and for that to be reciprocated. And for that, our communities mourn. We remember Olajuwon Brown, a 12-year-old child who in Skyway just last year in April was shot and killed and died in front of a 7-Eleven. His hopes, his dreams, his parents' hopes, and his parents' dreams for him died with him. And the community that we have, this city, this county, and this state, we need to do more to mourn those lives. And not only mourn those lives, but move forward in a way that we make sure that we're not standing at candlelight vigils again. Which brings us to the most recent events. Which brings us to Tania Gilbert. Tania Gilbert was a 19-year-old woman with hopes and dreams. She was pregnant. She hoped to go to college. We've heard that she had an interest in business and finance. She was, in many ways, a rock in her family. And somebody chose, on one night this past week, to shoot her while she sat in a car to shoot another young person while they sat in a car and to go on and shoot others as well. These events can't be allowed to stand. Strong organizations need to take strong stances against such actions. Communities need to rise up. Individuals need to say that this is the wrong sort of thing for anybody to do. And we need to say that this is not Seattle, this is not King County, and our kids, and our kids need to be raised by us, and we need to be in a place where we cre create an environment where there are, is opportunity and there's critical thinking skills that help people not to be in the spot where they make such callous decisions. It is not lost on us that the individual that committed the callous acts of this past week in reference to Tanaya must inedibly, 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 inevitably be hurting as a result of the actions that he or she committed on that particular night. Come on up, Gerald. This is Gerald Hankerson, President, Vice President of Seattle King County Branch of the NAACP. And last night, at a candlelight vigil, where 200 people gather to mourn the loss and think loss of Tanaya and think about exactly what the future would look like, somebody chose to fire shots yet again. Somebody chose to take actions that put communities in fear. Somebody chose to take actions that could have taken lives. Those that were there to mourn the life included the mother of Tanaya, other family members, people from the community, NAACP executive commi committee members, our vice president, amongst others. At this stage, the NAACP is prepared to announce that we are in a place where we are going to move forward with our youth council, leading the way in terms of addressing issues pertaining to violence in our neighborhoods, violence in our communities, 
violence with young people. At this stage, we're going to do more to support grown folks that need to be parenting their children. At this stage, we're going to be in a place where we actually seek and reach out to the national NAACP, not only in relation to police accountability issues, which we'll continue to stand strong on, but also on community building issues where we can make sure that we're building healthy, positive environments that don't support violence, that don't support any form of violence. I suppose that what we are saying today is enough is enough. Enough is enough. We can't sit idly by. And with saying that, we also have to point to issues linked to resources and the recipe for disaster that may be created in Seattle and King County by the cutting of things like school resources, by the closing or potential closing of community centers, by getting rid of those things that create positive avenues for us to actually reach out to our children and talk to them about some of the more, most important decisions that they could be making. It seems that for whatever reason in this city, we care more about the viaduct than we care about our children. It seems that for whatever reason in this city, we care more about tax cuts than we do about school closure. It seems that in this city, our children are an afterthought until moments like this. And then in moments like this, we turn around and we blame them all. And of course, people need to be held accountable for their actions. But of course, we need to understand this recipe for disaster. We'll be standing strong. We're going to push for the idea and the expectation that we don't want to see another murder in this city. We don't see, want to see another kid kill another kid. Let's try to make it past January of this year before we have to be here again. And let's try to never be here again. Let's make that the goal. And I believe that this, that this city can actually do that, can actually accomplish that. Thus far this year, we've had very few murders in this city, something that prior to this past week we have been very, very proud of. It's time to redouble our efforts. And I can't help but say there are organizations that have done a great deal to minimize the amount of violence that we've seen in the city over the past few years. Those organizations include groups like the Village of Hope, the Black Prisoners Caucus, uh, caucus, the Emoja Peace Center, and so many others that work directly with our kids every day, helping them develop and grow in such a way that they think about their actions before they commit a horrible mistake. At this stage, I'm going to turn it over to Jim. Thank you. Well, first of all, I must say that Tanaya is my niece. Her mother, Shaquille, is my sister. And the pain that we feel when it happens to someone close to you is no different than what a mother or a father feels when someone happens close to them. And what we're asking for is that the violence has to stop. We don't want to see another person go through no pain. We don't want to see another mother cry. We don't want to see another father enraged. What we're asking is for our community to stop the violence. It has to stop. All it does is escalate more violence and eventually more people get hurt and there's more pain in our community. We're in the process of trying to help our community heal. But we can't heal, but every time that we find a way to heal, that we reopen the wounds that have been behead, that have been stinging for us for so long. And because this is my niece, I don't just take this personally because it's a family, but everyone in the community I consider part of my family. So when we see so many people that go through this, and the, the, I was there at the vigil last night, and there was so many people there that was outpouring because of the grief that they feel, and it was just painful to watch my community suffer again at the loss of another child that didn't deserve, that didn't deserve to lose their life. What I'm asking for is our community to stop, think about what's going on here, and get involved to stop the violence, to get the guns out of the hands of these kids, help us overcome these issues, and we have to build a relationship with other communities to understand what the dynamics is here because we're pushing our kids to a point to where they're forced to explode. They're doing things because they have nothing, nothing else to do. 
They don't have the community centers that they can go down and hang out to. All they do is hang out in the street, do the things they do, and just build rage toward each other because there's nothing else there. I mean, I've been through this, I've suffered this, I've experienced this, I've been around all those that have been a part of this, but what I'm asking is reaching out now to our community, ask them that this has to stop. And not just because this is my niece, but that was somebody's daughter, that was somebody's sister. And just because it's in relation to mine, that she's a part of all of our communities, and I'm asking all of our communities to get involved to stop this violence. Put down the guns. One of the things that's difficult is that in the African American community, and perhaps many other communities as well, it's hard to find people that haven't had a relative, loved one, or friend murdered. And we need to stem those ties and create healthy and positive environments. Are there any questions? Can you talk a little bit about what the Youth Council be. You said that you are bringing forth the Youth Council and the National Chapter to assist. Well, for clarity, we already have a Youth Council um, that is uh, fully functioning with the President, a board, and whatnot, and we planned on working with them uh, in upcoming years to, and in the upcoming year to put them in a place where they are actually start talking about their demands in terms of what they would like to see happen uh, with their schools. We anticipated working with them uh, to do something, a movement or action in September in reference to that so that everybody can make it, make sure to understand that what we have are kids talking about actually what they would like to see. Uh, we think that on a lot of levels, peer-on-peer uh, -peer communication is a means in which we can reach kids that perhaps uh, NAAC, current NAACP executive members are not in a place where we can reach. We think that also if we're to be comprehensive in relation to this, we actually need to reach out to parents as well and help them to be in a place where they're better able to parent their children, um, better able to utilize skills uh, that they could develop and resources in communities. Now, part of what we said is that many of those resources are dwindling and we believe that that is true. Uh, also, part of what is present in the city of Seattle is those resources, resources are dwindling as the school, in the schools as well. Uh, family support uh, workers, family support staff are being lost in the Seattle School District. They are remarkably helpful in terms of uh, helping kids to work through issues, whether it be resource issues or issues pertaining to they just need someone to talk to. And that's something that's happening in our community that we need to change. I think that on many levels, some of the grown folks in our communities are afraid to talk to some of the children, and that needs to change. We need to have con candid conversations with our kids and be in a place where we start to develop real true relationships with them and, and talk about uh, many of the possibilities that are before them and also make those possibilities uh, something that's attainable through creating opportunity. Are there any other questions? Forgive me, I understand you're lost. But what? This has been going on for quite some time. I mean, We've had issues in the neighborhood. Why did it take this loss for you to make this issue? Right. Well, it, frankly, it doesn't take this loss to make this issue. Uh, this is something that we've been working on for years. We haven't made public statements like this in reference to this issue because we had hoped that we would be able to work with so many other organizations that are already on the ground working on exactly these issues uh, in reference to kids. And it's a delicate balance because we don't want our kids profiled, we don't want our kids mistreated, and we want it also to be acknowledged um, that the overwhelming majority of our children are not Christopher Montfort. The overwhelming majority of our children are bright, beautiful, intelligent, don't possess guns, and have no intention of ever harming anyone physically. And so we, we find ourselves in this kind of gray area when these matters come up, but rest assured that we have actively worked uh, in a place where we reach out to children and do everything that we can to help them to make better decisions. It's in, after conversation with the assistant police chief last night uh, that we decided to have this press conference. It's after an actual shooting at a candlelight vigil that we decided to make this a thing that was publicly uh, that has been would be put in a public spotlight in such a way 
that everybody, including kids and adults, would know exactly how the NAACP feels about what we're seeing, um, while at the same time acknowledging that we're in a place where we do have a remarkably low crime rate. But you can't tell that to a mother who just lost her child. Trust me, when my brother was murdered and left on the street corner, I couldn't tell my mom that the crime rate in Portland was low. Joe, you and I were at this thing last night, and we both heard the, the adults admonishing the young people to not retaliate. And yet, there were clearly people there who were bent on doing something. How do you reach those people that still have this in their hearts right now? I mean, what do you do to physically, as a practical matter, address that? Because we could just be at the tip of the iceberg here unless something happens to stop it. Am I wrong? Well, I'll, I'll answer and then Gerald can answer. Uh, and that is part of the concern and one of the reasons why we make comment today. Uh, for those of us that were around, we remember 1988, 1989, 1990, 1991, and the level of violence that was present in this city. And that level of violence hasn't been here in quite some time. But that level of violence that was in the city in the, between 88 and 92 was directly reflective of events that seem like this. And we would like to stem it off at the past and be able to move forward. And it's going to be difficult on many levels to reach many of the kids that are in, are in so many ways uh, in a very difficult spot because they've lost, lost a loved one and they're not sure what to do about it. And it's going to take some creativity in terms of reaching them as well. And it's going to take some risk. We're going to have to actually go out and talk to kids, uh, work with them directly, try to create opportunities, partner with organizations that are already doing so, and being in, doing, be in places where people publicly see us uh, working and observing and doing everything that we can to make sure that this level of violence doesn't occur again. And especially being in a place where we talk about the violence, and not just the violence, but the actual impact. The impact on mothers, the impact on families, the impact on communities, fathers, and the like. And what it really means in those uh, later hours of the night when a mom is at home crying or um, when somebody can no longer raise their child or whatever it may be that is actually present. And those are the things that we need to convey to our kids. They need to say it. Uh, I think that there was a quote yesterday, it's not an Xbox game, you can't play uh, hit a button and say reset, and that's absolutely true. And an instant, less than one second, can change the rest of your life and the lives of so many others. And I think that we need to spell out exactly what sort of second impact that second can have. And then perhaps we'll be in a place where people will think more critically about their actions. Also, we need to be in a place where we get guns off the streets. There's no um, real justification for the number of guns that are in our society and it's time to remove them. Yeah, you're right. We were together last night having a great conversation about these issues, and we was, you know, appreciative of the moment of watching all the, the whole neighborhood was out just grieving about what was going on. But I also want to acknowledge this. These things go on every day. It wasn't just last night. You got the Emoja Peace Center. You got all these community organizations that work with these kids every day down in the community centers, down on the streets, down in the neighborhoods doing this kind of work, talking to these kids, and keeping them actually involved in doing positive things. And if these organizations wasn't doing that, last night would have been repetitive many times over. It's unfortunate that some people does not go along with the plan. Some people just react or do stupid things that causes things like this. And we don't want that to diminish all the hard work that some of these organizations have been doing on their own. Not because they're being provided all the necessary resources from the state, the city, and the county, but people are putting, coming out of their pocket, using their resources, getting in their cars, going down to these neighborhoods every single day, talking to these kids, giving them positive messages, getting them involved in positive things. But these organizations just does not get the acknowledgement for the work they do out in the community, but instead when incidents like this happen, everyone will want to point the blame. Just yesterday particularly, when this incident, when we found out yesterday morning, it was a particular organization leader that I happened to work for, Washington Community Action. I was with this director. I got in my car to go console the mother who had just lost her child's hours earlier and she had yet to even see her child 12 hours later. But it was that organization that stepped up to help me go help the mother.
but you don't see them getting their, I mean, getting their acknowledgments for doing the things they do. We're not looking for a parade. We're not looking for acknowledgments. We're not looking for any accolades for doing the work we do every day. Many of them kids in the street doesn't have parents. A lot of their parents are either locked up, a lot of their parents are so isolated to where they don't have no effect on their kids. So they rely heavily on the community to be involved to do the things they do. And part of me feel like that community is not given the respect that it deserves because when the police and everyone else come out to that community, it's so antagonistic and the lack of trust there that it's difficult for a kid to believe or even believe to have the trust in order to move forward here. So we find ourselves in the same thing with these kids of fighting against a system here that doesn't give us all the necessary programs it takes for us to do the positive things. It's hard for me to tell a child that he need to do the right thing and get right opportunities there, but when the opportunities are not available for him, then he looks at me as a liar. But when those community is pulling together their resources, and like Omoja Fest and all of those guys, and the NAACP, the Village of Hope, People's Institute Northwest, I can name a host of them, is out in the community doing the work, Black, Black Love Sunday barbecues on some Garfield High School when everybody come out and play baseball, and just, I mean, we don't, that doesn't get the recognition as if we're not looking for, of being involved doing positive things. And I firmly believe if these kind of things wasn't taking place, we would have had a lot more than what we dealt with just two nights ago. Gerald's right. Gerald's absolutely right in reference to other organizations that have stepped up, that have done so much, that continue to do so much, and will continue to do so much. We have to find a way to make it so that our kids trust that positive, there are positive means of resolving conflicts that don't involve violence. And we're not there yet. And that's what we're working on. We've got plenty of programs that are already in place. We have plenty of groups that we already work with in reference to violence and ending it or eliminating or reducing it. And we have other programs that we've been working on creating uh, with several other organizations and political officials and uh, prosecutor's offices and police departments that we think will be successful uh, in the upcoming years. This is not uh, an isolated incident. It is a tragic one and we're hoping that it will not be repeated this year. Thank you.